conversations with people from the world of performance who are experimenting in very interesting ways in their chosen form. Enjoy. We have been trained to not fall or fail, for example. And falling and failing has like a similarity. Somehow, psychologically, it's been said that like, oh no, I will fall and then I raise. It's kind of also leads towards like failure in a way. So falling is kind of contradictory towards, but the reality is it's always there. We, if we don't fall, we cannot move in a way that uh, we cannot mobilize our body in a way. It, like every movement is a fall. Like we have to fall into the next movement and every movement comes against or towards the gravity. Hello, welcome, welcome to all of you to the podcast Theatre of Joy. Today, I am so, so, so excited to introduce to you Guru Suraj, who is so many things. But through his art, which is movement and basically contact improvisation, which he will tell us about, uh, he is going into realms which are so exciting for a human being in this, this, this world of today. And I will let him tell us more about what I am talking about. I'm sure he knows, even if you guys don't. <laughs> so, Guru, let's hear it from you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for this uh, beautiful uh, opportunity. And uh, I'm excited to share uh, whatever comes right now. And yeah, to start with, I think I would uh, always have been saying this across because I also go through many spiritual places and societies. Mm -hmm. So whenever uh, I say that, uh, oh, there is guru coming, they always think that there is some like spiritual guru who's coming. And then I say that I'm the registered one. <laughs> and then I'm not, I'm not one of the ones that you think of. It's my legal name and uh, I exist through this. And yeah. That's my introduction of, of my world. I think before we go on, I will tell you about a workshop that I attended together with Guru. Uh, it was on contact improvisation, which I had no idea about at that time. And uh, But Guru can tell us in detail about, uh, you know, what contact improvisation is? Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> um, yeah, contact improvisation is a form that has been evolving since it was um, being named as contact improvisation. It started as a performance in the early space. So it was more of a research in a studio what happens to the physical uh, body and the physical thing or physics that is always existing. For example, gravity always exists and we cannot deny uh, that gravity doesn't exist until unless we are in this earth. And uh, how does it apply in a physical form? And what happens when you share this physicality with other bodies in the space and and how do you improvise and what is improvisation deal with this whole thing because you are not really um, performing from a known space you are more adapting towards what is there at that point of time and when things are falling uh, into the earth they fall in their own time and space so when we all fall together how what happens is is the curiosity and uh, and then from there it started and it's been evolving like last year was the 50 years of uh, celebration of contact improvisation and uh, it's basically, going on mm -hmm. 
basically yeah something uh, came yeah. by uh basically you are talking about diving into the unknown because what we know and our parents taught us that mm -hmm. if you down too much and we you know don't care about the gravity and that we will fall mm -hmm. uh, we can hurt ourselves mm -hmm. but so that stops us from um, you know experimenting from improvising mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. from actually being present with our body because that's a fear which blocks us yeah uh, yeah that sounds very interesting and uh, uh, yes, yes, yes. Sorry, please go on. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, as you said that we have been trained to not fall or fail, for example. Mm -hmm. And falling and failing has like a similarity. Somehow, psychologically, it's been said that like, oh, no, I will fall and then I raise. It's kind of also leads towards like failure in a way. So mm -hmm. falling is kind of contradictory towards. But the reality is it's always there. We, if we don't fall, we cannot move in a way that uh, we cannot mobilize our body in a way. It, like every movement is a fall. Like we have to fall into the next movement and every movement comes against or towards the gravity. And if that's the case, then then it's interesting that then, then what are we really uh, talking about when we say that, oh, no, don't fall or don't fail because we are so scared of this. And somehow it's also some kind of social construct that we we, we develop as, as we continue living. And I think uh, this form uh, makes you to understand and also to look into directions, which as you said, look into unknown directions that we, we usually don't see. And improvisation helps in that way. And That's... going to spaces that will, you know, could, if we dare to go there, lead us to something else, to more and more. Sure. We are. To more yeah, for sure. What space is and what our bodies are and how we move in that space. So if we move with the fear, then we don't move. But if, yeah. we, if we move, uh, with the experimentation, the practice, which will give us practice. Yes. And then, you know, all those beautiful shows of contemporary dance and, mm. uh, you know, all kinds of... Uh, so there's yeah. a structure to your movement and you can explore. How wonderful. Yeah. yeah, how wonderful it is. And also to be safe in, in understanding. And uh, usually people ask, like, then what do you teach? It's like we teach to be safe in in playing this game, and uh, the the founder said that it's like two people or few people playing the game, but nobody's winning the game. Yeah. So or nobody's losing the game. We are just in the game, and we are not going towards a goal, but we are just enjoying playing. And I think as as growing up, like we have been used to say not to play but we play other games which we don't know or but i think it also brings this joy as you as your channel says i think it brings joy to play because we are all kids in different spaces <laughs> I mean, it not only uh, the exploration not only gets us to uh, know more about our body and ourselves but others' bodies, different bodies, and mm -hmm. touch, you know, the touch also gets structured in this world. You touch yeah. a person, the person interprets in the way this reality has taught him or her yes. to interpret. And yes. what I remember from my contact improv workshop was the, oh my God, the warmth, mm -hmm. the, the presence. And yeah. The, being present yeah when, when we went through all the you know the exploration that we did in the workshop yes wow. yeah yeah i feel like there is a big spectrum between touch and uh, and information that has been passed in the touch and i think as we get more away from the touch 
this information gets filled up a lot. So any touch would would be represented as something else, but not necessarily what it has to be or it or empty touch. Is there a touch which is empty without any information? And why do we have to always interpret touch? Even even let's say care and even care is a touch, but still it has a representation. Can we also touch with care and also not with care? and with with intention and also not with intention so can we also have this kind of um not having any kind of um interpretation towards touch it's like we are walking and what are we representing because we are touching constantly the earth what is it what do we what do we share to this and what is this informing us as well so this kind of dynamics plays a interesting role and i'm I'm always kind of curious that when when new bodies oh sorry I was saying it's when we share this to other human beings something really uh, essential that arrives and it's very precious and it's very hard to explain also through words in a way because it's uh, it's very intangible or it's something to be felt so, and you know touching and allowing yourself to be touched in mm -hmm. unknown realms let's say mm -hmm. you know things that are not already uh, trigger of certain yeah, yeah. Uh, stories in your head mm -hmm. uh, also is a dive into the unknown again mm -hmm. and uh, with the fear of being misinterpreted mm -hmm. stops from touching freely yes and, but when we get over that fear and mm -hmm. we really open ourselves out to this this can open up so many realms yeah so many spaces of the existence the human existence on this planet yeah it just opens up uh, some things and then there is no no limitation to it it's kind of like infinite and every and somehow even after a lot of years of being touched or like having human contact i cannot i cannot say that i know it because still i'm going into this infinite loop of unknown and it keeps like every time it's it's like new it's it's uh, unknown and still i am i am starting a dance with a space of like i have no idea what is this going to become and then i think that keeps it the alive the the dance itself because at some point how long can we uh, i'm not i'm not comparing but kind of also some traditional forms like you reach to a certain point and then this reach comes to this point of like okay now what and um, and then now i have done i have reached the top now i have to start teaching but yes but do you also enjoy the space of dancing or it just becomes like, you know, it's a product that I have to continue. Oh, yes, you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know, what you, have, you said a moment before, that is what life should be. Every mm -hmm. moment, you know, could be an exploration, could be not coming from the last moment. Yeah. yeah. And uh, every moment is new and joyful and exploring. And yeah. we bring our key conceptions to everything. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so I think that's living from fear. Yeah, that's totally living from fear because I don't want it to do it again because I think that, oh no, I have experienced fire. Oh no, it's going to hurt. Yeah, of course, but you're not going to do it in the same way. Now you're going to play with it. So still you're not, you're not scared of fire, but still you're going to spin the fire now. And you're going to just do other things with the fire. So it's like you don't want to get like, oh, no, fire is hot. I'm not going to touch it. Yes, of course. But still, you can do a lot of things with it. And it's not black and white as such. Oh, no, this is not. And I stop. Oh, no, it's like, okay, there is a lot of things that can be around it. And and I find it it's more, as you said, it's life. So it's very practical. I feel that it relates in many circumstances 
for me, yeah, I use it in a way because I done something. I remember something that how I negotiated and how I organized and in this chaos and but still I had fun. And I also see that again, like, oh, now my my space is chaos or my life is a chaos, but still I'm going to look at it and see how I can put it in place and I start still with it and go through it. <laughs> yeah, it's like, okay, there is pandemic. Okay, I'm going to go through it. It's not, it's not going to stop me by end of my journey. I'm going to go around it and I'm going to look. And I find it that's very... That's very exciting and that's very enriching in a way. Uh, at least it keeps me alive. And and I feel like I to share this, I'm also giving or sharing this, uh, this kind of an entertained but still profound meaning of why are we doing all this. It, sometimes from outside it looks like, oh no, why do you do this? It doesn't have anything. But sometimes you have to do it to know what is it really has to is about. Actually, I yeah. wanted to talk to you about uh, the you know the lack of human connection, touch. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, workshops, classes, yeah, uh, hands-on life during mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. and uh, what what how did you go through that and negotiate? Through that chaos. Um. Uh, yeah. Fortunately, we were uh, we were stuck in Goa, in Arambol, in a smaller community. So we kept it moving and dancing with the smaller people, like a set of small uh, gathering people. But also, I felt like it. It is also a notion that yes, there were people who were scared. But there was also people who felt hopeful to come back to the farm because they felt like this is the place which I can catch myself to come back to my own, to get out of my fear or get out of my so-called safe zone because what is safe, there is no nothing called safe. Just shutting down in your room is still not safe. And we all knew it now after experiencing this. Still, it's like there is nothing safe. You have to be you have to go through the fear and like dance through the fear and <laughs> i find it <laughs> and i find it like yeah this is so and yeah during the pandemic times and after that we were also traveling throughout us which when the pandemic was finished as well but still like there were like fear and then we went through a lot of communities that people were really stuck and could not find spaces and there had to be somebody from outside who has to come and provide space and make like hey it's okay um, and then and then it's like oh yeah true it's okay and and once you once you look into the fear then there is no exactly that because it just disappears it's just what we are trying to look is not outside something which we perceive inside and this preconceived notion is fear yeah, and you know that you dance through the fear, right? And that's mm. what your form, uh, it lives. It taught yeah. you to do that yeah. and come back every time. Yeah. Uh, because the, the energy of fear was so palpable, so much around everyone. Mm. And mm -hmm. to escape that mm. uh, was a doing, but it was perfect. Yeah. It is worth it for sure. I can highly recommend for people who are scared of uh, things or scared of many things, they should try contact improvisation because it just puts them, it just shows them, hey, look, this is fear. Would you like to dance with it? And then he's like, okay, why not? This is my partner. Even fear is a good partner to dance with, I think, <laughs> rather than ignoring or like saying like oh no i cannot dance with you so i was guru i was reading uh, yeah thing about you mm -hmm. uh, and i i just quickly read a little bit because i want you to uh, 
you know, the embodied experience of the performance plays mm -hmm. a big role in your work, right? Mm -hmm. Taking the traditional approach toward arts and becoming a fertile ground for the audience to shape their own experience and blur the audience and the performers' differences. And your art touches, impacts, and invites for reflection in ways that are unexpected and continuously evolving. So mm -hmm. this thing, you know, many dancers dance alone. alone. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Improvise alone. Yeah. But uh, your form and mm -hmm. your chosen form mm -hmm. uh, as an artist mm -hmm. uh, brings people together in the yeah. most the most uh, in the way that most people fear uh -huh. you know, just like this yeah, yeah. and uh, uh, yes would you talk about this you know uh, this differences between performer and audiences and because when a dancer performs alone it's uh -huh. a dark space and the audience is watching yeah except I, I find it forms you know yeah yeah I, as i said uh, earlier like contact comes from this space of performance and performance not as a tool of to show something but performance as a thing of an experience i am experiencing something and how can i share this experience like uh, i am drinking water and this water is so tasty and sometimes I can I can act it out, but I can also do it. And uh, some people can also sense it that hey yes, just just like in nature we see a, a simple dog uh, drinking water and it's satisfied or like eating its food with so much of satisfaction, and you also feel satisfied in that. So this kind of experiencing a performance not as a not as a tool that i have to show something uh which is not there but i can also keep experiencing something and i'm just sharing this experience this environment if somebody's crying like really crying in in the outside world we also feel sad looking at it it's not that they are acting or i am witnessing it so the performer is also a witnesser as, as you're dancing it, you're also witnessing yourself what is happening. And this witnessing is being also observed by the others. So it's not like more of like, oh, did you see what was happening? And it's not prepared. That's the, that's the interesting part. We are not preparing to show in a certain thing because the body, uh, we are preparing in a way that we are preparing in an extended version. Like we are preparing for like, five years, 10 years, 15 years of dancing. And this preparation is there, but we are not preparing to show for this show. It's like, oh, this person is skilled to able to like do something as present as possible. And how this presence can be shared towards an audience. And sometimes audience also becomes the performer because, because there is a reaction between as well. Like there is an observation that you see something and then you react to it. And sometimes you wanted to join it as well. And there has been some spaces we are like, yeah, if somebody is willing to join at any point of time of the performance, please enter. And then there's like few, few like there's nobody sitting. You see like three, four people sitting in there and everybody's on the stage and also dancing together and also experiencing what we are experiencing. So I find it, this is an, interesting spaces that I try to create with some and, of my uh, friends. Yeah. And, uh, you know, Guru, here, I would like mm -hmm. you to just put it in layman's terms. Yeah. What happens when, let's say, two people mm -hmm. are, you know, exploring uh, a contact improv yeah, yeah. space. Yes. So what really happens? Because people... Uh, probably don't uh, many yeah. people know that 
what is happening as let's say i'm dancing with another person and for me to able to understand through touch i have to be present at that point of time i cannot think for example i cannot think what will be next because i am following uh, it's like a blind man following with the stick so the stick is his uh navigation tool and for and for a contact improvisation touch is the navigating tool so i have to be there navigating to what is happening and i'm kind of going into a journey which is not we don't know where we are really going and then it's kind of continuing and continuing and continuing and then and then as i am doing something i'm experiencing me myself doing that so for example for layman it's like uh in your kitchen sometimes something falls and then unknowingly you go and catch and then and then there is nobody to see but you experience this is like oh did you see that did somebody see that so it's like but you saw it doing that but you are not really did that it just happened so your body was responding more than your brain can respond so this is what is happening your body is responding before your brain can think so you are constantly also looking at yourself sitting behind so this is what is happening i think as as i can put it in small words that there is in that there is the huge thing of you know you allowing your body mm mm-hmm. respond yeah so the ways you learned how to respond in this world yeah so that is the whole preparation of the that's what we teach is like okay how do we it's not that how to do it that how do we take off this kind of blocks that we have held in our system is like okay this pause, this space is not to be touched this space is not to be touched this space is to be touched this space has to be touched in this this way so all this list we are just like putting it aside still it says there yes of course we need for the society when we are walking but we are creating a space which we can keep this list away and see what is available and then i think that we all need space at some point we all need uh to create and share spaces which is different from environment as well and i think that's we all need to be authentic yeah for sure that means it means that how would it be to allow your body to move in the way it desires to yeah yeah especially when there with another person there are yes. so many boxes and blocks and which have to be sort of swiped away and removed before, yeah you know mm-hmm. and they are they are done in the process of yeah your body yeah they are done in the process and yes hmm. and it and you know what you learn with your body mm-hmm. okay the uh, so much a lot more than what you learn with your head i don't know yes. whether you know anything with your head at all you <laughs> <laughs> you're leaving your body and you know giving it uh, the opportunity to dive into the unknown mm-hmm. and, um, yeah and i think i think also sometimes i think that we we think about evolution like we have evolved and we are evolving in a way and and how much are we contributing to this evolution and how much are we contributing to this evolving human being and i think in that evolution body plays a very bigger role like from changing from having all i was just looking at this of like when did we lose all the hair and why did we lose all the hair because i was just uh, looking at this uh, anthropological study of like we had to run a lot to chase the animal so that it gets tired and we were killing them in this way and because we have to run a lot so we sweat and this sweat was not cooling because we had a lot of hairs and uh, so some beings started to evolve with less hairs because the intelligence of the body created like oh no we need because when there is less hair then the sweat can stay for a little longer 
and then it cools down the system. So the body is getting ready to able to evolve. And then somehow that's how we started to continue. And because we need friction in the armpits, that's why there is a little bit of hair left there, it seems. So it's like, huh, interesting that that and and I'm I'm thinking of like what are we evolving now? And what are we doing now? My head. <laughs> yes. And then a, a, a second spine maybe in the lower back because we are sitting all the time. So we don't want to evolve into something. And of course, of course, some people will be left behind or some bodies will be left behind because they, they cannot survive this. And I feel like all of this has to be contributed because we have to come back to the body constantly and also study and learn and understand. Yeah, and yeah. redefine touch and yeah. interpretation, redefine yes. language. It isn't to do with words only. Yeah. It's touch, energy, and touch is a very, very important part of uh, language. Yes. And it's like standardizing the touch. This means yeah. this. this yeah. means that. And, uh, you know, then we stop evolving. Yeah. Or evolve into some home. You know, I, you know, with a large head and weak voice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe. Yeah. I don't know. But still, 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 that dance will be some beings who will be dancing like us, I guess. For sure. <laughs> yes, Suraj, it was so, so, so wonderful talking to you. Yeah, same. I think, I think we left out a lot and mm -hmm. uh, we should do this again sometimes. Yes, I am. I am up for it, and thank you for it's. It's. It's yeah. really an interesting so feeling. Left to speak. Out. We were... Sorry, sorry. Yeah. No, no, no. Uh, no, it's. It's also a uh, interesting sensation of uh, when we share something that we think that we know, and then while we are sharing, we are looking at like, oh, some things I didn't know that I know it. So that's also. <laughs> So that's also interesting that I'm also observing like, oh, I didn't know that I have, I remember this information. So which is also beautiful. Thank you the for that. Crazy, the wonderful, crazy unknown. Yes, yes. <laughs> you know, we allow ourselves to really sit and talk together. Like I'm very fond of conversations. Mm, and, me too. Yeah. And so much we learn about ourselves and the other person in the yeah. conversation and if they can yes. be watching how does it get any better <laughs> yeah true i'm yes. i'm excited yes for <laughs> sure we should do it again yes please yes please yes. thank yes. you thank you so much i feel yeah, so yeah thank you awesome. i really yeah, feel me too. that you agree to come and talk to me <laughs> yeah same here glad that you reached out to me and i'm happy so excited to put it out there for people mm. to watch yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank yeah. you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Bye bye.